Our Universe Here are a few points about our universe. Universe is expanding with some thickness from the particles of subatomic particles. Thus every subatomic particle is retained with definite energy and also interactions between particles are mediated by special smaller particles. There is eminent energy, higher energy after the nucleus. This energy may be explained through black holes. Here I am not blaming any present theorems. I just hope this way and we get results for grand unified field theory and black holes. The particles are divided into layers while transcending from gravitational force to eminent energy, higher and higher energy. The matter that is visible to us is imbibed into the first layer with gravitational force. Photon, electron, proton and neutron are imbibed into the second layer with electromagnetic force and two nucleus force. In my opinion, quarks are retained as the next layer with great energy after nucleus force. In fact, the atoms thus divided are made of smaller particles. As we observe more forces, these forces are made up of smaller particles, but here we turn to find principal particles as we go to higher energies, eminent energy. These are formed all over the universe in a loop. There are several principal particles of the tiny particles in the nucleus. If these were to be divided further, there will be sub-particles of principal particles, and sub-particles have their principal particles, and so on and so forth in this creation. So, there will definitely be some forces that hold them according to an opinion. These are also the particular forces responsible for black holes. Every atom is subjected to gravitational force based on its mass. This energy is the weakest among all forces. Therefore, it so happens that light waves are able to travel fast over the surface layer. Electron is made of particular tiny particles. I suppose these particles can be produced from the nucleus. These particles are spread all over the universe in bottom layer. Electron particles form into an electron in its particular orbit based on the force in the nucleus as per the number of protons and neutrons. Once formed, this electron will be alive until the nucleus itself is disintegrated. After that, emitted light, suppose when an electron changes from one allowed orbit to another one nearer to the nucleus, one photon is emitted, that is, electron loses some particles. That means, I propose, form of particles converted into one bigger particle of existing layer, and everything is thus formed with the particles having certain energies. Don't think that I oversimplified things, leaving the presently available equations. I wrote these equations after carefully examining and mulling over relativity theorem, quantum theorem, steady state theorem, string theorem, and big bang theorem. Relativity theorem has explained that matter becomes mass energy and energy becomes body of matters. I presume this transformation helps in the expansion of this whole universe. Through particles, subparticle layers and particle waves, the universe keeps expanding. That means universe is expanding through particles of layers with different energies in loop system and tracing to eminent energy. From matter to each particle, if exposed as a loop, we can understand the great energy which is in a place beyond this universe. This universe keeps expanding by its particular energy, and particles dividing this great energy lying beyond the universe. In fact, all material objects in the universe are sharing with different forces in a loop from eminent energy, great energy. Thus, the universe's process of expansion goes on and on by the energy used by stars and by even bigger body of matter. This universe may also expand a little because of the life on Earth. 
there is a scope for source amount of contraction of the universe due to the formation of black holes. If this is the general explanation for the black holes, I shall explain it in a bit different manner than the already available equations. Then you will be able to understand completely about the universe, I hope. We know that gravitational energy is the weakest among all energies. I feel it is atrocious for some bodies in the universe to take such energy and turn it into unlimited gravitational force. Black holes. According to the Chandrasekhar limit, a star, which has one and a half times more body mass than the sun, cannot be able to withstand its own gravitational force. For example, let us assume that they disintegrated, defying the gravitational force. Then, gravitational force and electromagnetic force join together, gathering with them electrons, explode the nucleus, and again join the two nucleus forces till unknown forces and particles. In this process, I presume that atoms in the particles, elementary particles of the atoms, keep exploding each other, till they reach a stage where a great force that holds all the principal particles emerges and an eminent energy is formed. I suppose these events lead to the black holes. Note, I feel that if particles from the principal particles and body of matter from the particles could be formed, it is no big deal that a matter could explode back into the shape its original principal particles. We all know the distance between the nucleus in an atom and an electron. This was even compared with the distance between the sun and the earth. When atoms explode, the distance between the nucleus and the electron will be covered by principal particles which are not known to us. Therefore, there occurs many times more density than the normal limit. Thus, a big star can form into a black hole and there is a scope for it to shrink. Perhaps a matter spread to some thousands of miles can shrink to a semicircle, ranging to some hundreds of miles. Thus, hundreds of tons of density are squashed into a cubic inch space. It convulses space, and it convulses space into an infinitely deep chasm, and the black hole is formed. When matter explodes by defying its own gravitational force and reduces to its principal particles, which are unknown to us, there will be only particles and no body of matter. We are able to finally detect it by the microelectron waves. There are no atoms in black holes except the principal particles which are responsible for them. I suppose there is no radiation being released from there. When there is no body of matter at all, we cannot view them. Thus, it also sucks into it even light by its force. According to thermodynamic second law, a thing having the lowest temperature can release radiation only if there is a body of matter to it. Note, any body of matter near the black holes, even horizon, will be sucked into it. For example, if an object goes into a black hole, it will not be disintegrated under any circumstances. I presume that the eminent energy in black holes prevents the particles in a body of matter from reacting. The body of matter in black holes neither lives nor perishes, according to this theorem explained.